for having me. I'm also glad, you know, to be part of this program. Well, let me indeed start by saying congratulations to you and Nigerians on um, the just concluded 2023 AFCON tournament. Not so many Nigerians believe that the Super Eagles can indeed uh, make it to the final of the tournament considering the struggles in the qualifying games for the Next Nations Cup and also the 2026 FIFA World Cup competition. But let's take it up from there. Um, the Nigerian Football Federation in the aftermath of the tournament has recognized the effort of the sports ministry and the federal government in um, supporting the Eagles at the AFCON tournament. Will you say this is all that made the difference, you know, for the team? Or what do you think is responsible for the Eagles' performance? Well, I think it's, um, it's so delighting. I mean, congrats too, and congrats to the rest of the country, to every Nigerian. It's, um, yes, the Nigerian Football Federation has had to acknowledge the significant contributions of the Ministry of Sports Development. But I don't want to think that that is the only reason. I mean, there's a combination of factors, a lot of variables playing together. I mean, it's um, leadership of the country by Mr. President. I mean, he demonstrated, you know, the first major significant step that gave an indication as to his seriousness and to as how much he wished Nigerian sports, especially Nigerian football, well. I mean, when in one fell soup, and I say it all the time, when he made the approval of that very significant amount for the outstanding payments, I mean, these are liabilities that were not inherited under his presidency, but for which, I mean, he was the one that took that significant bold step to make sure that all this was cleared. I think that that gave me the first signal and the first indication that all was going to be good at the AFCON. And then, at, back at the ministry, I believe that, without being immodest, we've, we've, we've had the right kind of leadership. I mean, when I was appointed, and there was you and cry, about the fact of not having, you know, any active involvement in sports. One of the things that I said was that, well, it wasn't about any of that. What it was about was, you know, an ability to play leadership, provide leadership, and, I mean, and commitment, passion, and I think that's all what I've brought, you know, to this job, I mean, in the last couple of months. What this ministry has seen is, I mean, trying as much as possible to keep things simple, you know, to be accessible to everyone, I mean, and provide the kind of leadership that, I mean, it's so, it, it's a lot, it's a lot of that. And then, again, Nigeria, the same Nigerians that gave no chance to this team also rose up once they saw the early indications that the team was doing well. The whole country, you know, got involved in AFCON, you know, either by pre and all of that. So a lot of these things, and of course, the last thing which you can't, you should even confess, is that I think the god of soccer was also on Nigeria's side. You know, it's, um, you know, to try as you try, like it or not, you cannot not but also get superstitious at some point, you know. So I think that a lot of things worked together. I mean, when we went to go and see Mr. President, when he received the team when he came back, and I spoke. I started by saying that I mean, he got the rope of, uh, you know, it, it, it's, um, it's, 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 the president came with a lot of that, you know, that, that good luck. You can't, you can't discount that good luck in sports and in football, you know. I, I said he had the rope of the gun, you know. So it's, um, all of this came together to get us what we got, you know. Uh, like I spoke to some people. I wish I came back to Nigeria with a cup. But God, that same God knows best. That same God that took us to the finals. That outside, you know, 2013, that we won gold, the last time we won silver was the year 2000. You know, so I thank God, and I think I'm glad that you can be head of a ministry such as I am, do all the things that you knew you do, you know, I mean, make all the sacrifices, and yet don't get results. I'm glad that in my own case, I think that very reasonably we got results, I mean, and, and came back and put, you know, the entire country was in a joyous mood, and I'm glad to be part of this history. Well, uneasy, they say, lies the head that wears the crown. And um, in a country where a lot of Nigerians, close to 200 million, are coaches, are also indeed passionate about football, and I'm sure you were getting reports of Nigerians who were watching the game in the course of the tournament. And then the team was close to lifting the AFCON trophy. But unfortunately... Um, Sometimes um, you can never tell. Uh, the, this time it went to the host country. Uh, what will you say uh, went against the team 
Is it depth? Is it luck? And in terms of building on from here, the kind of supports you think the team needs going forward, um, what do you think is needed? But before then, let's indeed go pay some bills. When we come back from this commercial break, we will continue. Um, I interview the, the Minister of Sports, Senator John Eno. TVC Sports Desk. And the match will start. And Johnny Keke don't land for hospital. See Johnny. Yo. How mama won't take come up from Keke with picking with their hand? What did she go do? And she passed the picking to Johnny. He catch up sharply. The game got red. She has in the dribble go reception. And this one goes through to the work together as a team. And the nurse pass the form to mama. And mama. Shaba. Johnny follow baby Judy they play. As the mama they feel the form. And the nurse has the mouth for something. He play mama no get out. Now so he go take it. Yeah. And Johnny don't pull out the vaccine card from the pocket. Who oh, is they don't get close now. They're not already vaccinated. Johnny, they play me picky. Johnny, go feed one so. Hey, 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 hey. He's a goal! He's a single enter! I'm so champion! Sure, say you support the team, way important pass. Make sure, say all those where you love get the vaccine where they need. First, make sure, say they show healthcare person when they near them their vaccine card. This message now from the Federal Ministry of Health and Social Welfare through the National Primary Healthcare Development Agency with support from the American people. Oh, This is the moment where Johnny don't reason for hair tire. Everything Johnny don't do. Now to make sure the thing will won't happen now. Go happen. And they see him for Johnny Eye. He just should say ready. And now COVID-19, bring Johnny and his wife. Come here. Because she get belly, it's very, very important for her to get the vaccine to avoid serious sickness. Oh my god, she wants this strong hold. She says this bongo hold. Don't worry, the shot goes more entire. He run the club. He's on the club. He run the club. He run the club. He run the club. He enter. I don't know. My husband yeah. did the vaccination matter play. Yeah. Sure, say you like the team way important pass. Make sure say those who get belly, or those way old, or those who get serious sickness, get the COVID-19 vaccine. Yeah. This message now from the Federal Ministry of Health and Social Welfare through the National Primary Health Care Development Agency with support from the American Desk. <laughs> Well, if you've just tuned in, you're watching the program Sports Desk, still taking a look at the aftermath of the just concluded 2023 Afghan tournament. And we're talking uh, to the Minister of Sports, Senator John Eno, who is in the federal capital, uh, Abuja. Well, I was talking about um, the Super Eagles who played in the final, and um, it could have gone either way. They almost won the trophy. But on the part of the sports ministry, going forward, um, what do you think the players need? What do you think the NFF needs? And also, um, do you think it was just luck that went against the Super Eagles? Well, I mean, thank you. It's, um, the views I'm going to express in terms of what I think going forward. Uh, are the same views I would have expressed even if we came home with the cup. I mean, and these views are the first. These views are mine. You know, these views... You know, may not be the views of the NFF. I mean, I'm not going to run the federation for the NFF, but I think that these are these are views. It's um, it's, it's not a, it's not all about luck. You may talk about luck in sports and in, in in football, but I don't think it was totally that. I mean, the God who took us up to the finals, I'm sure best knows why. Times, for example, are we able to put together our national team? You know, to get to know themselves, to play more together. I mean, oftentimes, it's only when a tournament is coming up, a few days to the day, I mean, we just call them from their various bases. But I think that going forward, we need to see how many times out of competition period we can actually have the team play together and, and so that we can, I mean, a lot of these things count a lot in sports, count a lot in football. You know, so, so going forward, that's what it is. I believe that, and I've already said this to the NFF, I mean, I've put them to the greatest tax in terms of what needs to be done. I mean, the, the, the survival school that took us to AFCON, I mean, by the fact of his contract, his contract... So, Jen, oh no, you, you, know, you raised some very valid points um, 
in the history of the FIFA World Cup competition since 1930, we are yet to see a foreign coach lift the FIFA World Cup trophy within a country. I also talked about the last couple of tournaments on the continent of Africa where local coaches have been dominant. And we also know um, the role the sports ministry plays when it comes to um, supervision you know, of sports in the country, Nigeria. Um, on this platform, on TVC Sports Desk, we also spoke with the NFF president who confirmed that um, the contract of um, the coach um, will expire on the 28th of this month. Um, will you want to confirm if the NFF have been communicating with you? And uh, does this in any way bring some form of pressure on you considering the followership of um, the Super Eagles success at the AFCON tournament, building on that going forward, knowing fully well that Nigerians who are passionate about football will not want to negotiate with the FIFA World Cup tickets in 2026, where we have the United States, Mexico, and uh, Canada hosting the FIFA World Cup trophy for the very first time. Does this put some form of pressure on the sports ministry advising the Nigerian Football Federation on how important it will be to take a decision on the coach between now and the next couple of days and also moving um, football forward um, in the right direction that um, the ministry and Nigerians expect? Of course, it comes with a lot of pressure. I mean, it's, you, can't, you can't pretend about it. I mean, there's pressure on the ministry, there's pressure on the NFF. I mean, the kind of followership that the last, last AFCON, you know, excited and generated in our country. I mean, it did appear at some point as if the whole country was involved in AFCON. You know, so you have that kind of situation, of course, and you talk about pressure. Of course, there's pressure. There's pressure to deliver. There's pressure to do right. There's pressure to take decisions as quickly as possible. Uh, you know, but like I said, you know, while admitting that I'm not going to take decisions for the NFF, of course, you know, I'm going to continue to express my views to the NFF. Uh, you know, in terms of what, what, what I think, in terms of what we think, in terms of what we think is going to be right, and see what and what we need to do to build and to develop, you know, to build on the success of AFCON. You know, and then, like, I mean, I've worked with, I mean, with the president and with his leadership for the past five months plus since becoming minister, and I know that, you know, there is, there's no one, there are no set of people that want to get results for our country as much as the set of people that are at the NFF today. You know, so it's, um, and I believe that ahead of the expiration of that contract, I believe that the NFF is putting its acts together and putting its house together, not to disappoint Nigerians, you know. I mean, we've continued to share views about what we think it should be, but until the NFF makes those views public and takes decisions and all that, I won't be able to speak for them. But that there is pressure, why not? There's pressure on everyone. You know, to make sure that Nigeria, you know, the way we are now, I mean, silver winning team. I don't think we want to, you know, go back on that. I don't think all what we aspire to do is to continue to improve and continue to make Nigerians happy. Because I find out that if there's one thing that contributes to liveliness and happiness in Nigerian homes and all that, is that it's, you know, senior national team, especially or in particular, continues to do well in the tournaments. Well, um... Honorable Minister of Sports, let's um, now take a look at um, other sports. Basketball readily comes to mind. The last 48 hours was very tough for the Nigerian Basketball Federation. And um, at some point in time, they had to withdraw the Tigers, the country's national team, from participating in the 2025 Afro Basket qualifying game until the sports ministry you know, came to their rescue. This talks about funding of sports in Nigeria. Over the years, we've seen former Minister of Sports lament that um, there is not enough funds for all the sports. Uh, what does this say about our funding system between the private sector and, you know, um, the government for the development of sports in the country? Well, I think it says a lot, you know, I mean, thank God that, you know, eventually we'll be, we're able to salvage the situation and the Nigerian, you know, male basketball team is participating, you know, in the tournament in Tunisia. I mean, thank God. But like I've had to respond to some other people, you know, I've had to respond asking how many more times are we going to keep finding ourselves in this kind of situation? And I think that what, you know, happened in the last 48 hours, 
I mean, it just exposes, you know, the underbelly, you know, that, you know, belies Nigerian sports. I mean, they, you've talked about it, funding. Funding has remained a challenge. It continues to remain a challenge. It's been a challenge the last 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 years. It's the same thing, uh, you know. I mean, it's, um, they, we have a new, you know, sports industry policy, national sports industry policy that tends to, for the first time, get everybody a, a bit more a bit more thinking we challenge everyone about the fact that sports is not merely for recreation and leisure it's, it's a business you know find a way of attracting the private sector corporate organizations and all that to get interested uh, you know the fundamentals of our sports you know administration and all that are not right i mean so far it's almost government 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 can continue to fund sports alone. The private sector has to get involved. I mean, we are looking at various forms of partnership that can work. We are looking at what's going on in other countries. Why can't what's going on in other countries happen in Nigeria? I mean, there's the popular example of Team Great Britain and the, the lottery, you know, you know, trust fund that is available for sports funding, not just in Britain, but in several other countries, Canada and Co. We have a lot of trust fund in Nigeria, which is not able to fund sports. You know, try to look at, you know, the law itself. Is the problem with the law? Or is the problem with the implementation of the law? I mean, until all of these are gotten right, I'm sorry to say it, the problem is likely going to continue. Because sitting on this job for as long as I have, on a daily continuing basis, the demands for, you know, funding, you know, are on the increase. We have to do something, you know, sporting federations. You know, every day, every week, every month, we have our sportsmen and women competing in different parts of the world. All of this come with the challenge of funding. And so far, it's government, it's government, it's government. I mean, even some federations that are able to attract some little bit of funding are also overstretched to the extent that they can't cope anymore. You know, so, so, so I think that, you know, all of these and... You know, the ministries at the moment, like I said, getting itself together and trying to come up with, you know, proposals for new funding models that can make our sporting, you know, sports funding a bit more sustainable. I mean, the example of the Tigers, like I asked, I mean, how many more times I'm going to go through this and all that. I mean, it also affects even the, 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 the performance of our various teams. Because when, you know, traveling for a competition is characterized by uncertainty, are you going to be able to make it or not? When in actual fact, you are supposed to be first be in the camp, you know, you're, going to be, you know, you're supposed to arrive at the country of the competition some days to be able to acclimatize, but you find yourself arriving that same day and you have a match. I mean, it has a telling effect on the outcome of performance and all of that. And until we get our funding right, this is likely going to continue, I'm sorry to say it. But we're working hard to make sure that, I mean, it's... Um, that the, the, the outcome of AFCON and all of that that we're able to attain, that it doesn't get you know, suddenly stained or messed up by a few other inabilities as a result of lack of funding. And that's why I said at the beginning, I'm glad that we're able to overcome you know, the appearance of the Tigers in Tunisia in the competition you know, as much as possible. So, so, so it, you know, the, the funding remains a problem, and my hope is that you know, all people of common goodwill, all people that are interested in this country, corporate bodies and organizations and private people will be, be, be more forthcoming in terms of because whatever you, anything you do for sports, you are doing it first and foremost for the Nigerian youth. We have a youthful population, so you are, whatever you, investment that you make, you are making it to provide something. Is it employment? Is it job creation? Is it, I mean, poverty, you know, eradication and all of that. So it's, this is a clarion call. We are hoping to be able to call some stakeholders, you know, engagement at some point with corporate bodies and private people and be able to, you know, make the case, you know, that requires their getting involved and interested in providing funding, you know, for sports in our country. Minister of Sports, Senator John Eno, I must say a big Thank you for finding out time to talk to us on the program Sports Desk on TVC News. Thank you so much for having me. Like I said, I mean, anytime, it's my pleasure to be part of your programs.
That was the Minister of Sports, Senator John Ennor, talking to us on the issues bordering sports in the country, Nigeria. Still to come on the show today, we have uh, the EFL Cup coming up this weekend. Premier League games across England and also in Europe, La Liga and other matches. Not forgetting the police games all day in all your states. Let's go pay some bills. When we come back, we'll be taking you to all your states. TVC Sports Desk.